Today, we're going to compare between a cheap mid-range and high-end Hokkien prom Mi together with Genevieve. Which Hokkien Mi is most worth its value and worth your money? Let's find out. Food Finders! Hi guys, I'm back for season 6 of Food Finders and what am I doing here? <laughs> we are actually going to try three different price tiers of Hokkien Mi today and this was supposed to be the cheap option they apparently serve three dollar Hokkien Mi however we will go to another place the market that I was told to come to is closed what's cheap to you Jen? I would pay up to like six dollars that's cheap for like a decent size plate but if it's small then it's four dollars so the other place we're gonna go is gonna be four dollars what's this one? this was supposed to be three dollars we missed a good deal would you pay for quality for hawker dish? yes Maybe up to like 20. What's the max you've paid in a hawker center? 10. But it's like super huge plate, a lot of prawns, a lot of soft long. So let's say in the hawker center, $12 one time, me, will you pay it? Will you buy that? No? It depends on how they upsell me, right? I go to a one time store and it's $12. Then I would expect Iberico chashu, things like that. Then a one time is like, I don't know, using some special pork. Okay, cool. Anyway, so we need to drive to our next, our first location. Let's go back to the car. So we're at Pekyo Market and we're at our first spot. So I heard that actually their plate goes for $3 in the past, but now it's at about $4. So they increased price by a little bit, but I still think it's pretty affordable. And something unique about them is that they are actually recommended by the Michelin plate. So what we are having here is the cheapest Hokkien Mee for the day and it's priced at $4. This is definitely not the cheapest plate of food here because when we were queuing up for the auntie over there, she was like, oh, um, we don't have the longest queue. La. The opposite person has the longest queue. Oh, oh, it's too cheap. Oh, it's too cheap. As you can see, like, people are still quite sensitive to pricing, especially in the hawker centre. They will always look for like the cheapest option. I mean, cheap and good uh, It's always very important. But as auntie have said, $4 cannot find anywhere else anymore. So I'm like, that's true. I like my Hokkien Mee a bit sticky. I would say they have to cook it until the noodles congeals with the sauce and it's like one but for hers it's a bit more on a watery side I think it's because like she doesn't want it to make it too like congealed in a way because as the noodles sit right it'll absorb more of the liquid and the most important part of Hokkien Mee is the calamansi the calamansi just lifts everything up It's a bit more clean. I can't really taste the prawny taste. I think the stock is a bit milder and not a lot of wok hay, which is also something I'm looking for. It feels like something like my grandma can make. Like when you're cooking at home and you can't really achieve like that really wok hay taste. But it's still good and you use good ingredients, you get a good product. But not wow. The more traditional style don't use like wow, very concentrated uh, prawn stock or seafood stock. So a lot of times they actually just use like water, not as heavily flavoured. I think they're using three types of is it three types of bihun inside. Like, Yellow noodles, there's a thick bihun and there's a thin bihun. So you get like strands and thickness, chewiness and a bit of the yellow noodle taste. I don't think it's like up there for like my Hokkien Mee rankings. For a uh, $4 dollar Hokkien Mee, like, no, yeah, no, my the... favorite Hokkien Mee is $4. Dollars. Really? Where is that? That's a regular garden. I think the quantity is quite a lot. Eh? Well, the noodles is a lot. Two small prawns, whole bunch of fish cake. I got one squid on it. I'm so sad. It's not really doing it for me. Eh? I like it though. You like it? Eh? As in, this is what I would expect at like the $4 level. And it's old school in a way that it's a lot of noodles. It's not super expensive. It's really designed to sort of like fill you up. For an everyday meal, I can see myself eating it every day. Yeah. Because it's very mild. It's not so gelat in a way. Affordable, how can we done? So we're gonna go to mid-tier. What is the price range for mid-tier? Guess uh, what, guess. what is a mid-tier Hokkien Mee? I think lah. Uh, 20. I think the most expensive yeah. is like $60. Okay, can. 
It's possible. So now we are at our mid tier range and we are around McPherson area, which is actually in my hood because this is where my kitchen is at. The owner is Gwen and I actually know her personally. You know, FMV people, we always meet each other in events and things like that. So I'm a big, big fan of her prawn noodle soup. So I didn't know that they have a Hokkien Mee version. It's kind of a new menu item. So they used to be called a uh, One Prawn and Co. But they have recently revamped to Chup Chup. I was talking to Gwen, like, how does she prepare her Hokkien Mee differently? Uh, my Hokkien Mee is uh, served in a clay pot. We will free fry the noodles to get the wok made that you get in your traditional uh, Hokkien Mee. Okay. Usually traditional Hokkien Mee is done in a big uh, flat uh, cast iron pan, right? Mm. But for us, we want to do it in a clay pot so that you can make a uh, piping pot throughout the whole meal. The theory is that you do it like risotto, so you stir it enough such that you draw the starch so you have the tap tap yeah. uh, creamy sauce yeah. for the okay. And also her soup rice is very very strong and it's very flavorful when she first tried making hokkien mee uh, because her soup was so strong even if she did wok hei normally you can't really taste the wok hei flavor so she added an extra step of frying the noodles in pork la to make sure that she gets this really really strong wok hei flavor before adding her flavorful soup use our butt put in the fry the egg then when egg when you fry at high air right the egg what tend to very nice, you know, like fried egg. Yeah, the crispy, crispy. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very important part of my Hokkien Mee. Then, after which, uh, I add in garlic and then I put, I go high with the soup content. When you are hosting and turning it, right, you don't want to burn it, but at the same time, you want there's this like white smoke that is coming through. Mm. So, that's the smoke that you get from the Mid tier Hokkien Mee priced at $14. From the looks of it, it already looks quite worth it in my sense because there's a lot of clams and there's a lot of seafood, there's a lot of prawns and things like that. And it's just very unconventional to serve Hokkien Mee in a clay pot. So they get points for like being more theatrical and creative as well. And my favourite, they have pork lard. Uh. Mm. What's this sweet sweet thing? Is that also pork lard? Yeah, I think it's like sweet oh, sweet pork lard. Hidden underneath. I'm quite impressed because, like I said, I was afraid that it would be a bit dry, right? But it still has that chop chop feeling and also not too watery. They cook the noodle really well and it definitely absorbs a lot of flavours as well. So sadly, they don't have calamansi, but I really hope they added a shit ton of calamansi in this chilli sauce. The wok here is real, yeah? Wah! <laughs> Oh my god, the wok hey is real. Punch in your face. It's damn distinct, the wok hey. It's like the most wok hey I've tasted in the Hokkien Mee like ever. When she was telling me the story, she's like, Oh, you know when I first launched it, people were saying that we cannot taste the wok hey taste. So like as an owner, right, she's like, Okay, you cannot accepted. taste right. Challenge accepted. I'll give you your wok hey. So this is what we are getting here. She said it complements the soup or the tzap really well. Because the tzap is also very strong. But then now you get two distinct flavours. So this calamansi has a lot of color. <laughs> the chili is very sour, yeah. Oh well, yeah, it's, well, it's very sour, which is good. It saves you from sticky fingers. Mm. The prawn is always good. Uh. The Hokkien Mee is better than the prawn noodle soup, I feel. Really? Uh. That's a very big claim because they have been known for their prawn noodle soup forever. I tried both now, so I, I prefer this. I do feel personally that this is a bit too much for me. Especially the wok hei part, it's quite strong. If you ask me to eat every day, maybe a bit hard. But it's a, like, it's like, it's like a treat. We still have the treat later on. No, it's just expensive. It's not yeah. the flavour, bro. Like I think $14 quite worth it. There's a lot of seafood. They have a sufficient amount of noodles. The flavour is there. I think the hours took, you know, to create this dish was like really long. So it's quite worth it, I would say. It's delicious. Is it delicious? Jen? Say it, Jen. Say it, Jen. Say it. <laughs> Another impressive thing right, is that it's been sitting here for like how long? And the noodles are still chewy. So I think the noodles were well fried, right? So it doesn't like just absorb or the soup. It has still like a layer of like crispiness around it. So La Panyang has also shared with me, you can bring home a frozen packet and it's only $7 for half a litre and you can actually make like a portion of two or three if you stretch it out a little bit. If you love the prawn soup here, you should definitely come here and get some because it is a labour of love and it's very hard to make at home. We're off to our last stop which is the most expensive one. I can't wait. 
to see how much Seth would spend. Thank you, Lao Thank you. <laughs> so we're at our final stop and it's the most expensive stop of the day. We're in Tang's Plaza and the place we're going to visit is Justin's. Gastro Cafe and Bar. So it's by this really quite a popular face around here named Justin Quack. His food has been actually been cooked for ex-presidents and ex-prime ministers. I would say he's cooking things fit for royalty. I'm ready to be pampered today. So without further ado, let's go eat the most expensive Hokkien Mee of the day. We are here sales sponsor obviously. Yeah. So you have joined in for the most expensive one. If I'm paying for it. Yeah, I'm paying for it. Yeah. Most expensive. Hokkien Mee price at $33. But online, I think we read that they had a half lobster version. So we're going to see if they can do that. Lee Kuan Yew's former chef. Cook in the in the house of Lee Kuan Yew. So crab meat capellini uh, was LKY's favourite dish. We wanted to get the Hokkien Mee. Uh, we actually saw online that you could do a lobster version. Is that right now? We will not be able to. Oh, because, you stopped uh, doing that already. Last time we used to do the frozen lobster, which is uh, uh. not great. Yeah. Oh. So we, we decided just to do the whole live lobster and only available based on the stock market. Today, no lobster. No lobster also. Let's just get the king prawn one. So this is the most expensive Hokkien Mee for the day and it's at $33. First thoughts is I'm not disappointed. I think this is a not a one-person portion. This feels like one, per, one portion to me though. To you? Oh my god. Like one Fat. <laughs> There's a lot of liao and the sea prawns has a bit of the roe inside which is quite exciting. Uh, there's a bit of the flower squid, pork lap, my favourite and also pork belly slices mm. for my kind of Hokkien Mee. I prefer to have a bit of the pork belly slice, prawns and squid. It's so intricate right, like the garnish and all, like the scallion is like finely chopped. Slice. Also this chilli uh, is very different. This one looks like sambal. Also I don't think sambal goes well with Hokkien Mee. You know it tastes like what? You know the chai po on top of the... Chai po. Chi kui, chi kui. Exactly like that. So sweet, man. There's a lot of dried prawns inside. I can't pinpoint what's up with this. You know, this looked way better. This is not Hokkien Mee. It's like Tao Mian with like a bit of prawn zhap inside. It just feels like the zhap and the noodle not like integrated, you know? Very ang more like bastardized version of Hokkien Mee. The zhap doesn't congeal with the noodles. There's no wok hair at all. But it's just not the same feels as uh, Hokker, Hokkien Mee. Like it's starchier, kind of blends together. You get the flavour of the stock in the noodle itself. The noodle didn't really like absorb any of the stock much. I can't pass it as a Hokkien Mee. Don't have the anti essence. It's like some non-Chinese or so. So it's like, don't put that in. <laughs> it's like Gordon Ramsay cooked like, Hokkien Mee. Exactly. Yeah. But as a dish, I like it actually. It's very simple. But I wouldn't think of it as Hokkien Mee. I feel like they're missing a step. So after they put the noodle, they fry it, right? They have to simmer it. So they cover the wok and like just let it absorb and like blend into one. I feel like they didn't really do that. You no know, home chefs, they don't really know what it really takes to make a Hokkien Mee. They have never experienced Hawker lifestyle before. Then they're at home right, they're like, okay, you know what, I have a Hokkien Mee recipe. So the Ang Moh Chef la. Yeah, like an Ang Moh <laughs> Chef, right. They just have all the ingredients, then they follow to the tea, right. This is the result. Like, it's nice. But it's just not Hokkien Mee. If you're talking about, is it worth it as like a dish? I get it, because you're in town. It is really nice setting, yeah. really good ingredients. $33, sure. But is it Hokkien Mee? No lah. Yeah, but that's the thing. Right? They brand it as Hokkien Mee. No, but you ask me if I'll pay ma. I will pay. Would I agree it's Hokkien Mee? It's not lah. So if they call it a different thing, Singapore-inspired prawn fried Hokkien dialect noodles. <laughs> I, I imagine like a tourist coming here expecting to taste what Hokkien Mee is like but this is like nothing close to it. True. That frustrates me. That's it for Justin Gastro Cafe. We're gonna round up today's episode. Okay, so we've finished our three price points of Hokkien Mee today. Which is the most worth it Hokkien Mee? Initially, I was thinking, you know what? I'll always go back to the OG, the Hawker Centers. Even if they don't have as much liao, but the amount of effort that goes into making the noodles broth and also like the wok hay and the effort to cook the noodles right it's already worth the amount of money they are charging as well yeah and it's always between the price point of like four dollars to seven dollars my worth it one will go to the hawker center in my mind i'm doing the math why buy like nine plates of the four dollar hokkien mee or one plate of uh, justin hokkien mee and i feel like i'd rather buy nine plates of the four dollar hokkien mee however i would 
trade off three four plates of the four dollar hokkien mee for the chap chap one. I do think the chap chap one is something that I am okay to value. I feel it's the most value for the price versus quality. Basically, what he's saying is that he would rather just have one and chop chop by himself, correct? Thank you. So that's it no. for yes. food final for today. Yes, Actually, yes. I want to say uh, something. Uh, Again, let me say it. So right, I really think this worth it, right? It's actually uh, quite fun for me. So I want to ask you guys, what do you want to see next? So the challenge would be to find a really like day-to-day -day common dish, you know, that would be supposedly cheap, right? Then for us to actually find a very very pricey one. I see, feel like that, that part a bit yeah. a bit hard. Any suggestions? Do let us know in the comments. Oh yourself, do you say you want to try chicken rice? Yeah, I think chicken rice. Good maybe, contender. Maybe chicken rice. All right. Till next time. Why am I suddenly in the frame again? Okay. It's your show, bro. So normal scientists, they will compress the feces into like a pill. So people get eat pills and then like they... <laughs> so she and the, and the boyfriend, right? The boyfriend had healthy gut health. The boyfriend shit inside a box. So she ate his shit. Wait uh, uh, She put it in the freezer. She blended it up. <laughs> and then she made like small little like capsules. But she said she overcame her IBS problem. Because the feces is a very large part of gut health. So when she ingested it, she got the good bacteria from that feces. You know that show, that oh, horror show? The <laughs> show? Oh, the human sensor pee. Oh, wow. So they have very healthy bowels. Maybe. That's what I'm trying to say. Having healthy bowels is not about eating the right things, yeah. but eating very diverse things. Okay. So if your gut has like a million bacteria, it's better for you. So when someone insults you with like, go and eat shit, it's actually a good, it's a compliment. Uh, asking you to improve your bowel health. Exactly. Hey, you go and eat shit. I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you.